Welcome to this episode of the Two Druggist Podcast with your hosts, Dr. Ben and Matt, both community pharmacists who work together at a small independent pharmacy. Our podcast has the goal to educate and entertain our listeners with stories and, and, uh, and inform pharmacy and medical nurse and nursing students about the top 200 drugs, along with humorous tales from the pharmacy. Remember, you can listen to our show on iTunes, Spotify. You can also catch us on YouTube, and you can follow us on Twitter at Two Druggists and Instagram Two Druggists. Today's topic is antivirals. Yes, and welcome, fans and pharmacy fanatics. Like Matt said, we're talking about um, antivirals for flu treatment. And before we go any further, don't make any stupid decisions after listening to us. Consult a medical professional, or even if it's one of us in a professional setting, your doctor, local pharmacist, we're here to edutain you. That's right. So, so do anything stupid without consulting a real professional. This podcast is, is somewhat silly. That's right. Uh, we are not responsible for your idiocy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So flu season's approaching. It is. Hallelujah. Something other than COVID. Yeah. I mean, is it here? I mean, could, could we say it's flu season now? Uh, I think starting uh, September, yeah. Yeah, around there. It's a little different each year, but we're September coming up through on May. It. Yep. So if you don't know what the flu is, it's only been around since, you know, the 1500s. That's the first uh, actual description of it in literature. Uh, and everybody knows what the flu is. It's that rapid onset muscle aches, fever, dry cough, headache. Uh, in kids, you can have the nausea and vomiting, which confuses a lot of people. It, it's, it's one of those great viral illnesses. It doesn't make you feel good. It does not. You can get it in your nose. I mean, that's how you get it, really, through the nose. People coughing and sneezing close quarters. Yeah, droplet sort of transmission. Thing. Yeah, everybody knows about COVID. It's the same idea with the flu, right? Right. Uh, but unlike the COVID or the vid, however you want to think about it, uh, we have some arm- weapons in our armamentarium against the flu. Yes, yeah, so we have an armory of things, and Plaquenil is not one of them. Nope. Uh, you know, there's supportive care, which everybody knows. Paracetamol, if you're across the pond, or acetaminophen, ibuprofen, uh, you know. All yep. those lovely things on the cough and cold aisle. Yep, for your fevers, aches and pains. Everybody knows this. Drinking plenty of fluids, chicken soup. But if that doesn't work, well, we have antivirals. But before that, you should have gotten your flu shot, which I think we're going to cover on the next episode. Yeah, right? next episode is going to be vaccines for the flu. So, yep, that's the best preventative. That's right. Other than hand washing. I guess you could wear a mask. You could. And, 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 you know, some offices, if you're uh, contagious with the flu and you're symptomatic, they will send you out in a surgical mask. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a good move. It is. Uh, you know what the best thing about flu season has been? What's that? Student pharmacists to do flu shots. Dude, I, you know, when we first, when I first got licensed at least, I was like, fuck yeah, like giving shots is awesome. Like you feel like you're a doctor, but it's just, it's the worst thing it's awful. And, you know, student pharmacists, we are happy to have you around That's in right. these months. Uh, I remember on rotation, I had a, a, a advanced rotation right at the start of flu season. I think I gave like 300 flu shots in six weeks. It was great. That's all I did. It, it takes a lot out of you, though. Have you ever done a clinic where you go somewhere and you're literally just people are walking through an assembly line, you're just giving shot after shot? Yeah. It, it's like exhausting. It is. Very much so. But it's for the public health. It is. And it, it beats um, some of the other parts of pharmacy. Breaks up the yeah. monotony. It breaks up the counting methadone and putting it in the bottles. Yeah. It does so, indeed. So, antiviral drugs. Yeah. We, we've got a few. Did you want to start with the obvious treatment? I think we ought to start with the big gun, Tamiflu. Yeah. The go-to. So Tamiflu is the brand name uh, Tamiflu. Uh, the generic name is Olstamivir. Uh, that's a great name. And of course, the neat thing about Tamiflu is it inhibits viral release. Uh, flu virus has this uh, protein spike called neuraminidase. And neuraminidase is what is uh, used to release the virus 
lyse the cell and let the, the virions go into the uh, intracellular space to propagate the infection. So it uh, blocks neuromididase and prevents viral aggregation and release. So in layman's terms, it doesn't let the virus out. What you described, is that a similar term to what viral shedding is, or is that something else? Well, that's, well viral shedding is, is the same sort of mechanism, except, you know, if, if you're infected with the flu, you know, it may be in your nasal passages. As it replicates, it gets shed out in the mucus and the coughing. Okay. And, uh, that would be viral shedding. So that's more by which how it's transmitted to others. Right. Okay. But, but blocking the neuromididase is something that will slow the replication. It won't kill the virus, but it, it slows it down enough for the immune system to catch up. So I'm looking here now. Um, neuromididase inhibitors, they're active against um, influenza A and B. Correct. Is that correct? A and B. A and B. <laughs> Now we should note for our listeners, uh, you, your, your doctor um, CDC puts out resistance data and you need the physicians will monitor for uh, patterns of resistance to Tamiflu, uh, you know, but I haven't seen any really big resistance. Yeah. And of course, go ahead, Ben. Well, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I mean, even if there is some, it seems to I guess still be effective because every year it becomes on back order shortage it does. It's, it's used so much so often. Very much so. So it does the trick. It bu people buy it up and people are getting treated with it. Right. And, and so uh, Tamiflu uh, has an FDA indication for uncomplicated illness due to influenza A and B uh, for patients one year of age or greater who are symptomatic less than 48 hours. And that uh, 48 hours is pretty important. Um, Right. One for because if it's not initiated within that time frame, you're not going to get the best results. Right. And you've well, Tamiflu flu is much more affordable now. But the second thing financially, you may be spending a hundred dollar copay, whatever yep. X amount of copay on something that's not really going to give you much benefit. Exactly. Um, it, it, it should be noted that there's a big warning that Tamiflu is not a substitution for your yearly influenza shot. So I can't. So just take it every day during flu season like I would Plaquenil right now for the vid? No, you, you really can't. It wouldn't you know, help your me. best protection is that flu shot and that immunity. Uh, for, for those of you out there that are, are dying to know, Tamiflu is available in capsule form, 30 milligrams, 45, and 75, and it comes in a lovely tutti fruity flavored suspension at 6 milligrams per ml. Oh, yeah. It's very palatable. It goes right over the tongue. It's nice. Nope. Never taken it, so I can't say. Well, happily, yeah, me neither. But, it, you know, it smells pretty kind of good. Uh, the other interesting thing is uh, right in the package insert, for those of you that like to read government documents, uh, there are instructions now on compounding it extemporaneously if there's a shortage. And uh, if, you, if you would like the insomnia cure, go ahead and read that. Yeah, it's right in the package insert, isn't it? How yep. to make it up? Yep. It is. So, so it's helpful in those times of shortages for the oral suspension. You got a kid. Every at least at least uh, yearly, the the suspension goes on back order first. Oh yeah. Yeah. Got to treat them kids first. Yep. Uh, not only kids, but the, uh, the geriatric population. Oh yeah. There's yep. always questions about you know using it as prophylaxis. If, People if with you've... dysphagia can't swallow. Yeah. I'm looking here in my Bible, my Quran, um, pediatric patients, um, it says here, I guess, age two weeks to 12 years, you yes. can use it in, and it's dosed on body weight. It is. I've actually, I actually had one pediatrician call and double check that with me in the pharmacy. I was shocked. She yeah. was giving it to a two and a half week old neonate. I, I'm kind of shocked by this. No, I didn't know that. I mean, you can be pretty damn young to, to be getting Tamiflu. So that's good to know. Treat well, infants. You know, I, I think the benefit of Tamiflu is if you're giving it to somebody who's in that um, fragile estate, the benefits definitely outweigh the risks. For sure. Yeah. Uh, are there much side effects with Tamiflu? You know, that's an interesting discussion we should have because if you look at the side effects for Tamiflu, a lot of them uh, mimic the flu. So, okay. uh, 
let's see, adverse reactions here. Uh, so you can have neuropsychiatric events, which is a, a black box warning. Um, as with most drugs, you can have nausea without vomiting, or you can vomit, diarrhea, bronchitis, abdominal pain, dizziness, headache, cough, insomnia, vertigo, and fatigue. Well, I don't know, dizziness, headache, cough, insomnia, and fatigue all could be caused by the flu, so they're questionable to me. Uh, the neuropsychiatric events could be caused by a relatively high fever, so again, questionable. Right, and uh, what do you mean by neuropsychiatric? So neuropsychiatric event, um, in the literature they've reported confusion, hallucination, um, odd behavior, particularly in children. Okay. To take uh, Tamiflu, but then again, they have an active case of the flu, so that... Yeah, you know, you're out of your mind, delirious, feverish, sweating bullets. Mm -hmm. But it, most of that, from what I understand, too, is just case reports. Of course, it there's the, war the warning for it, but it's kind of one of those things where it's, yeah, it's iffy. It is. Now, Stephen Johnson-type skin reaction or... Uh, oh, yeah. De uh, dermat uh, necrotizing, not necrotizing. Toxic epidermal necrolysis. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. Walking dead. Your skin sloughing off. Um, that that's probably legit. That's probably a legitimate um, adverse oh, yeah. reaction. Yeah, that's that's a very serious one. One you never want to get. I, I was Definitely. quite I was quite surprised. Uh, there are no major drug interactions for Tamiflu. It's clean, it's a, man. It's it's beneficial for sure. However. You do not want Tamiflu within 48 hours or, uh, of getting the live attenuated flu vaccine. Not that, that you would get that because right. it, would, it, it would inactivate the virus. Okay. So just kind of, it negates the effect of one another. Nothing that would per right. se put you at risk. For, no. Well, put, put your risk, you wouldn't be protected, but not right. an immediate type of thing. You'd be flushing your money on the copay on the vaccine if it's within 48 hours of stopping Tamiflu. Have you ever given an intranasal one? Nope. I did one time and I fucked it up. You're supposed to give... It comes in like... I think it's... I'm trying to remember. It's like my first I know it's like up. a, a pre-metered pre syringe. Yeah, and you're supposed an to... Yeah, and you're supposed to give half in one nostril, half in the other. Yeah. I just... All in one nostril, this one guy. You're six knees and so. Well, I mean, as long okay, let's let's be let's be clear. I mean, as long as you get the vaccine in there, that's eighty percent of the battle. Right, but this one was for an adult that didn't want the needle. So I get you get those people still. You know, I, I if given my choice, as as an aside, I would take a kill and fill vaccine that's that's not live at all over a, a live attenuated. Yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather get it in the muscle. Hey, do we want to uh, bore some of our listeners with pharmacokinetics? Oh, of course. That's what they're Excellent. here for, right? Right. So, for those of you that are dying to know, uh, Tamiflu is at least 75% uh, absorbed by the oral route. Uh, it is converted from Ostamavir phosphate to Ostamavir carboxylate, the active form, via esterification. Ah, uh, uh, yes. A little bit of uh, medicinal chemistry there. Uh, plasma concentrations or levels in your blood are proportional up to 500 milligrams twice a day. So a nice linear dose curve for us out there. Um, Co-administration with food has no effect with AUC, Tmax. So those kinetic parameters that all the pharmacy students look at and cringe. Don't worry. Take it with a snack. It won't affect it. Volume of distribution is uh, relatively low at 26 liters. Okay. Uh, it is low, pi low binding to plasma proteins of only 3%. Uh, it is not an inhibitor of any liver enzyme, so that's important to know. And it is eliminated with a half-life of 6 to 10 hours, 90% uh, through the kidneys. So it goes right through you. Kidney exactly. cleared, that's important to know as far as dosing adjustments. It is, and there is a, a note on dosing adjustment for renal impairment. Uh, no adjustments down to 30 milliliters per minute. Okay. After that, you have to dose adjust. Gotcha. Uh, your liver could practically fall out, and that won't bother it. 
Uh, and if you're old, there's no adjustment for being geriatric. Very good. Well, damn, Tamiflu sounds pretty, pretty, really easy, to be honest. You know, it's doesn't have a whole lot of issues with it. It doesn't. Oh, it's pregnancy category C. And that means really we don't know. Right. Question mark. If there's issues. So uh, it, it probably mutates uh, fetal rats. <laughs> <laughs> well, the fact uh, the the vaccines are, are category C too, correct? Uh, you know, I'd have to look. That's I think they are. Episode. Yeah, we'll get to that. But I think it's also, all in the same ballpark pregnancy category. It is. And, and just for you really wondering out there, it is excreted in breast milk. And so, we have. So we, we do for sure know that? We do. Okay. Now, we do not know the uh, risk to the uh, fetus there or the, the, the nursing baby. Question mark. Yeah. We don't know and we don't necessarily want to have a clinical trial to find out. No. But for the most part, you know, I think for a, a you know, pregnant person or a new mother, you know, the risk outweighs the benefit. Tamiflu yep. is probably a safe bet. Yep. It falls into that clinical judgment, as they right. say. As they say. So if I'm, if I need to get treated, if I'm, I go to an urgent care and yep. they test me for flu, they say I'm positive, I'm symptomatic, it's within the 48 hours. What's the dosing for Tamiflu? I believe adults, it is 75 milligrams twice a day for five days. Yeah, so not and so much the milligram part, I have to look that up, but the treatment is twice a day for five days. Correct. Versus preventative. Which so is once a day for five days. So if my child or whatever who lives with me has a flu, I'll probably get a script called in for me too for the preventative. Can most definitely. So that's that's our that's our number one candidate. That's Tamiflu. That's the go-to. That's the uh, that's the starting lineup. Yeah. Now we have a, a another product that I have never seen. It's only in 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 his Bible and mine. Um, Zanamivir. Yeah, the big Z. Uh, no one... What's the brand name for that guy, Ben? Relenza Discaler. R E L E N Z A. Nobody uses this shit. I don't think I've ever seen it. Neither have I. But it, well, but it's good to know about. It is. It, it also is a neuromidase inhibitor, but mm -hmm. but they want you to inhale it. And let's think about this. You have a respiratory infection. Yeah. You may be feeling short of breath, and they want you to inhale it. Yeah. Not not a big practicality. You know, they didn't think it through administration wise. Um, and it, yeah. But the funny thing is, um, and it's easy to remember, it's the same dosing as the treatment versus pro prophylaxis preventive treatment for Tamiflu. Of course, it's inhalation. It comes in a little blister pack of cards. I looked all this up. I've never seen the thing. It comes in a little blister pack um, that goes through as you inhale them and click it through. Okay. But treatment wise, it's one inhalation twice a day for five days versus um, daily dosing for 10 days. And it's got the same side effect profile. You know, there's the risk of neuropsychiatric events. Right. Um, but of course, you're inhaling something, so you have your risk of bronchospasm. Right. It's not an ideal drug of choice for someone who's asthmatic or has COPD. Right. If you're smoking cowboy killers, you'd probably want to lean towards Tamiflu and not right. this. But aside from that, same mechanism, same side effect profile but your breathing issues because you're inhaling something. So wait a second. We develop an antiviral that yeah. has all these downsides for a respiratory virus, and then we put it in an inhaler. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I want to inhale a blister of powder when I'm already short of breath. Yeah. Well, no, you would, you would you'd, you'd use your Duonib first, of course. Yes, dilate the bronchioles. And then that'll counteract the spasm. Oh, yeah. And then we, we have use an it. IV. Yep. This one is called Paramavir, which I've never seen either. My guess would be it, you would only see it in an institutional setting, being that it's an injectable. Hey, um, can, can you uh, ask your uh, institutional reference there uh, next to you if, if she's ever seen it? Have you ever seen uh, the drug Paramavir? Is that on formulary, Cam? Which one? Paramavir. Mm -hmm. 
Have you ever seen it? <laughs> Never heard of it. No, no, it's non-existent. <laughs> All right, so that's another entry in uh, the Bible of knowledge that nobody yeah. probably uses. The, the trade name is Rapivab, R-A-P-I-V-A-B. It's rapid because it's injected. Yeah. But this one's got a warning for SJS, like the Tamiflu. Um, Relenza didn't have that. My guess would be it's not a, as systemic. Right. So, yeah, those are the... Uh, neuraminidase inhibitors i'd say the uh starting qb of the bunch would be the tamiflu and then Definitely. the other two guys they they probably got cut yeah uh you know probably it was one of those cost versus benefit deals oh yeah oh and no I, you know what happened i figured it out i'm brilliant at least in my own that? mind what do you bet genentech bought him out and took him off the market Who's this Paramavir, the, yeah. the injectable one? Yeah, uh, it's very likely, I guess. And and the uh, Relenza. Well, it's the type of thing too where they price themselves off the market. It's probably yeah. like three, four hundred dollar product that nobody ever is going to use. And you know, then then we have the old old antiviral that's not used for this anymore. Ah, uh, yes. So, norimidase covered A and B influenza. Remember. So, yep. what's the old one, Matt? Amantadine. Yes. Yeah. So amantadine. Am I looking at that right? Yeah, amantadine. Yeah. So most people think of it for EPS. Yeah. Some Parkinson's like symptoms, but it's got antiviral activity also. It does. But uh, due to resistance, you can't use it alone. So theoretically, you could use Tamivir and amantadine together. Okay. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. I don't see any dosing for it either for the no. amantadine. I don't know. That's it's probably just so antiquated that nobody would even go go in that direction. And and that, then there's another one, rim uh, rimantadine, or okay. luminide. But I've never seen that one either. Me neither. Just the amantadine, but I've only seen it used for you know the I'm Parkinsonism and yeah. things like that. Um, only effective for influenza A. So the yeah. neuraminidase Tamiflu is really what you need to remember. Good for right. A and B. Yeah, along with you know washing your hands, don't get coughed on. You know, yep. Don't uh, lick your spatula at work. Hand sanitizer. I don't like that stuff, man. Yeah, it's there's some gnarly ones out there that really, really stink, dude. You know why they stink? Because they're made out of like shitty processing. I don't know. No, a couple of the ones that I've seen out there have uh, made from agava sugar, so they all okay. smell like dirty tequila. They do. <laughs> Dude, no, if you no. the one, have you um, have you used the one at the store where you work Monday? Uh, no, I haven't. I, I've been afraid to. It's the worst. You have to do it just like for science, just for, you know, Tell you what, knowing. I'll, I'll, I'll crack the vial and give it a smell before I try it. You don't want to get in your car right away because if you get pulled over, you'll be breathalyzed. Oh. It's, it's bad, man. Oh, man. Dirty tequila. All right. Yeah, man. You know, you, you got to wonder about these hand sanitizer manufacturers. You know, they just didn't see this coming. A lot of distilleries, I think, took up making them. They did, which is why they smell like crap. Yeah. Whatever was left in, over in the barrels that got mixed in. Yeah. But, you know, hand sanitizer is not necessarily effective against viruses. No. I meant to ask you, You, I think you plugged the show in one of the earlier podcasts, Roadkill. Yes, I did. Are you wearing a t-shirt? I am. Roadkill. Oh, yeah. Guys that eat bad and fix up cars, right? That's right. I still haven't watched any of them. It's all right. Uh, I, I don't get uh, – since they moved over to Motor Trend On Demand, and uh, I haven't bought a subscription, so I haven't seen like four seasons worth. I'm okay. kind of in withdrawal. It's bad. <laughs> yeah, I got some fine, find some time to wear uh, road killing, man. Yeah, got to. It's I not going to happen anytime soon, but that's okay. Between, I understand. Between the two druggists, uh, work, Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, the other YouTube channel, 
Uh, yeah. I, it's I hard got to, a lot going. It's hard to get to. It is. Um, and apparently I'm still roped into the Phi Lambda Sigma Law Review for MPHA, so that that's going to be ongoing. Are you preparing stuff for that? Do you have to lecture? Uh, actually, I did lecture. I recorded a lecture, and it's behind a paywall. Um, <laughs> it's behind a paywall? Yeah, so you actually have to sign up for the law review in order to hear the lecture. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. I did. I, I did. Um, it's been a couple months. What the heck did I? I did general pharmacy law, um, uh, pharmacy operations type stuff. Okay, just like the federal stuff. Yeah, that... well, no, it was more like nuts and bolts pharmacy. Okay. It was, uh, you know, what what to expect on your first day as a pharmacist, you know, 222 forms, um, you know, looking for fake prescriptions. The weirdest um, shit will happen on your first day. Oh, it will. Years of, it's, it's, it's hilarious. Your first but, year out, it's just like the funniest stuff. Two months out of school, I had to go through a, a state drug control inspection by myself. Yeah. <laughs> Still post-traumatic stress. That and people, they try to take advantage of you too. Like, yeah. you know, try to twist you around and, you know, yep. it's, it's, it's great. It's the first year out, it's, it's fun. It is. You, you kind of get your bearings. Yeah. You get your um, sea legs. Yeah. You, you, you develop the bullshit meter. Yeah. For you student listeners who are students. You know, you'll know what we're talking about soon. You will, because th there's enough bullshit out there that. Have yeah. you ever noticed, Ben, that the only the only drugs that find their way to the toilet, the kitchen sink, uh, the cat box, <laughs> or are mysteriously disappear are all controlled substances. Nobody ever loses their blood pressure pills. Ninety nine point nine percent of the time, the point. 1% was today. Seriously, a lady said that she threw a Medrol pack in the toilet. She like it went down the toilet. That's that's what she told me. Yeah, I, so, I would have refilled it. I yep, that's exactly what we did. I charged her 1097 Excellent. and she she thought that was the best person ever. Easy solution. Yeah, it's just weird like how do you lose a Medrol pack? Yeah. And of course you'll hook someone up with that. Yeah. Uh, my favorite story was this lady called the pharmacy, and I'll never forget this. She said she went camping, she went whitewater rafting, and because her doctor told her never to leave her drugs anywhere, she uh -huh. took them on the whitewater raft and uh -huh. they fell in the river. Yeah, well, you know, whitewater rafting is very anxiety-inducing. It is. So I would want mine with me. She lost her alprazolam. Her oxycodone, <laughs> her, her carsoprodol, <laughs> and her tramadol. So she lost the whole cocktail on she the did. water. It was terrible. That's bad, man. It and and the, oh, I kind of remember that. I yeah. think I, never, I think I remember that one. Yeah, oh, that damn, that man. that was great. I mean, how the hell do you do that? It never ceases to amaze me. It doesn't. So how are we doing on time? Um, we're doing pretty good. Let's see here. We're uh, we're doing good. Um, Excellent. We're like two thirds of the way in here, man. We're covering some ground. Oh, we're kicking ass. So, um, I guess we can talk about the newer one. I can. I mean, I don't want to talk too bad about it. It's just oh. I've I haven't dispensed it. It's, I don't. You have rep, reps coming in talking about it, and I don't this see a whole lot. This is our podcast. You could talk bad about it. They're not sponsoring us. All right, it's true. What, if they do sponsor us, we'll say some nicer things. They can give us money. But this newer one, it's a, it's a new, it, it's a different MOA, right? It is. Uh, it's Zofluza brand name. Is it spelled with a Z? X O L F U Z A for all so of you spelling concerned people out ex, there. Exflusa, exflusa, yeah. Zofluza, exflusa. Yeah, I, I like Baloxavir, uh, Marbolex. Now you have to say it ten yeah. times fast. No. <laughs> Let's hope our old dean's not listening. He'll he'll probably be having a uh, heart palpitations or something. If any of our listeners can send us a video of saying Baloxavir 
Marboxyl ten times fast. That'd be great. We'll mail you a tr- a two druggists uh, merch or gift of some kind. Yeah, we'll start a list. Yep, just email us. What's our email again? Two druggist podcast. Two druggist podcast at gmail dot com. Yeah, Baloxavir Marboxyl ten yep. times fast. Anyway, sorry. Oh no! So me- uh, mechanism of action is is quite unique. Um, it's an endonuclease inhibitor that blocks the uh, translation of the viral RNA into protein. Okay. So it blocks the uh, viral dependent RNA polymerase from making protein. So this prevents gene transcription. So it stops the virus in in its track and the virus gets in the cell, but does not replicate. Okay. So it, it, it really just kind of knocks it right down beats him down it does um of course just like uh tamiflu it's indicated for uncomplicated influenza in patients 12 years of age or older um who have been symptomatic for no more than 48 hours otherwise healthy blah 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 blah. um that 12 years of age or older is pretty uh, important because it's not been studied in persons younger than 12 and, and that will become clear as we talk more about this drug. And again, Zofluza is not a substitute for your yearly influenza vaccination. Oh, man. I've been taking Zofluza daily since August. You have? Yeah, just in hopes of preventing COVID and the flu. I shouldn't, have, I shouldn't have done that. No, that, that sounds to me like you wasted a crap ton of money. I had to take out a loan for it. You did? Why didn't you just order it off the internet, Ben? I could have. I mean, there are all those pharmacies that'll sell you like uh, rapidly dissolving Viagra and. Uh, oh yeah, Blue Chew, man. Blue Chew, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. It's there's so many like I don't know how think people like that get away with it. I guess it's it's a compounding pharmacy of some kind, but it's. No, they, I, it, They've got to be like a, a, a little sweatshop in a, in a in another country, and they probably oh, yeah, FedExed it into the country. Just factories of sweating people yeah, pouring out blue chew, Sildenafil tablets, right. trochies or whatever. No, man, yeah, I man. think the trochies will sell. I need to find some bootlegs of flu to prevent me from getting the flu this year. I, I would just wash my hands and, you know, wear a mask like everybody else. Yes. Uh, <laughs> have you wondered about the masks so in some institutions i guess the employees there you either have the option of getting the flu vaccine and submitting documentation to hr yeah. or you can opt out of doing that and get a mask right I, I wonder if us being required to wear masks already maybe i don't know how the flu season is going to pan out with that alone oh no they're 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 gonna fucking they're gonna fucking hold people down and and stick them with flu vaccine this year man it's gonna be crazy but do you think the fact that we have to wear masks also there might be uh, a more mild milder flu season less people getting infected and hospitalized death i haven't a clue i i'm actually bracing for a uh, bigger flu season yeah i'm thinking because we've been so separated as as we get back to more normalcy i uh-huh. think we're going to see things crop up by that you mean you know we, we've been quarantining at home and our immune systems aren't right they aren't in tip-top shape they're not but i have a great way to get your immune system in tip-top shape what's and that this is a bona fide two druggist tip okay vitamin d3 okay any particular it, unit or strength uh, my my suggestion is 5,000 units a day. Start with 1,000 if you don't feel comfortable, but at least 1,000 units a day of vitamin D3, the active form. And okay. there's good data out there that suggests that uh, high vitamin D levels prevent respiratory infections above 50. That came, um, there was literature on that for the coronavirus, right? There, there was. They were trying to extrapolate uh, the coronavirus from the flu virus data. Okay. The, the coronavirus data is still mixed. Is, is the flu virus a coronavirus? No. Flu virus is an orthomyxovirus. 
Okay. Uh, orth Orthomyxoviridae, um, there's influenza A, influenza B, influenza C, uh, parainfluenza virus. There, there's a whole family of those viruses. Uh, and they are, they are an enveloped, double-stranded RNA vaccine, uh, virus, um, whereas the coronavirus, I believe, is more single-stranded. Okay. So what I'm getting at here, I guess, is that your annual flu shot will not protect you from COVID-19. Uh, sadly, no, it won't, but it will definitely help you fight off uh, the flu. So you right. should see your local pharmacist to get that flu shot ASAP. And if, yeah, God forbid you get, you contract both viruses somehow, yeah. you know, you're at least somewhat covered for a flu. Yeah, you know, after our flu virus vaccine, uh, we ought to probably work in an episode on the various uh, coronavirus vaccines in development. Yeah, it's good to know about. I kind of fell off of following it, but, you know, yeah. it's always good to refresh. Well, you know, it, it, it's COVID fatigue, man. Everybody gets it. <laughs> uh, back to Zofluza. Yeah, what else do we need, need to know about um, Zofluza or its uh, chemical name, Biloxivir Marboxyl? Yeah. This will be on the. That'll be on your test. That will be. Uh, you can take your test at uh, at Two Druggist uh, on Twitter. Um, so the the big thing that all all medical professional students should remember is Zofluza is weight-based. Okay. Uh, it's not one size fits all. Uh, if you are 40 kilos to 80 kilos, it is 40 milligrams, a single dose of two 20 milligram tablets. So what, what will be dispensed to you is a blister card with two tablets and you have to take them both together. Don't separate them. That's stupid. Why couldn't they just make it as one tablet? Well, I, I asked that question myself because the next one, if you are 80 kilos and above, uh -huh. your dose is 80 milligrams and you get to 40 milligram tablets. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> so, so I'm sitting here scratching my head going, well, if the lower dose is just 40 milligrams, why not just give them a 40 milligram tablet to take? Right. Anyhow, Anyhow, we're not the drug companies. No, I, I'm sure some guy in an office got paid good money to figure that out. Give them two. They'll love to take two. That's right. Two, damn it. Two, anyway. damn it. So, uh, PK, pharmacokinetics and dynamics. Uh, Biloxivir is um, completely converted to its active form. Uh, so it's given as a prodrug. Okay. And Biloxivir is the active form. It has a, a maximum concentration in the blood after four hours. But here's, a, here's something you guys need to remember. <clears throat> uh, taking Biloxivir with a meal reduces its bioavailability by 45%. Uh, different from the Tamiflu administration. Correct. So I would tell people don't take it with food. <laughs> uh, it's 93% protein bound, so it's, it, it sticks around in the blood. But apparently this guy is quite lipophilic with a volume of distribution of 1,100 liters. So it, it rapidly partitions into the fat tissue of the blood. Okay. And the reason you dose it only one dose is it has a half-life of 80 hours. Shit. <laughs> 80 That's hours. Like, that stuff hangs around. It's almost like a bisphosphonate. Yeah, almost. Uh it is sadly metabolized by our good friend 3A4, the one that does uh, like eighty percent of drugs. Yeah. So that should be ringing danger, Will Robinson, for drug drug interactions. Did we mention that it's given just like the Tamiflu? It's got to be given within the forty-eight hour window of symptomatic. I don't think we did. So that's a good point. So, uh, so very easy to remember. It's okay. different mechanism, but administration-wise, other than your food and antacids and things that chelate it. Right. You know, same uh, administration time frame wise. And for all our pharmacy students out there, the, another drug that should not be given with uh, chelins like uh, antacids or carbopolymers is, you know, our good friend azithromycin. Yeah. And, yep. and doxycycline, the tetracyclines, all it kind of falls into that category. You got to separate them. Yep. Uh, 
Zofluza is 95% uh, metabolized and excreted by the liver. Body weight does have a significant effect on its kinetics and absorption. So as body weight increases that, you know, greater than 80 kilos, heavy D as they would say, um, <laughs> uh, it, of your exposure goes down. Yes. Um, again, you covered it. The, the biggest counseling point with this drug is don't take it with antacids, dairy, uh, chelating, uh, things like that, aluminum. Right. Uh, and you won't get your bang for your buck. That it's You're not going to get it in your system for it to work effectively. The, the funniest thing I read in the package insert is they figured that out by giving uh, Zofluza to monkeys. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Those poor monkeys. I know, right? That means they had to take an antacid and Zofluza. Yeah. Two tablets of it. Two tablets. So my question is, how the hell do you train a monkey to take a tablet? Oh, you can train a monkey to do anything, dude. Oh, you could. And uh, to, no animals were harmed in the making of this podcast. Either. That is correct. We don't we're, harm animals. We're not, we're not in favor of that stuff. But it is funny. Yes. <laughs> in, in, well, a, in, a, in a, well, I mean, not really. It's not, no, nah, it's terrible. I shouldn't say that. Yeah. We, we don't want to make any of our, banned. we don't want to make any of our TikTok followers mad. I heard, I heard the big T is uh, going to ban TikTok. I, we got to get on that. Yeah, we uh, I'll I'll tweet at him or something. Uh, I actually have responded to some of his tweets, and uh, <laughs> my phone didn't explode, so that's okay. Yeah. Well, we're good on time. We are. We're uh, we're uh, uh, coming to an end here. Actually, we did good, we man. We did we rambled through. We did. All right, so I think this about wraps up uh, this episode of the Two Druggers Podcast. Uh, today we talked about the uh, antiviral drugs and uh, you know I think the big take-homes for this episode for our listeners is uh, antivirals are pretty uh, easygoing drug class not a lot of uh, drug drug interactions some well tolerated counsel. yeah well tolerated it, yep uh, Z- Zofluza is a paperweight uh, you'll never dispense it the injectable ones the Relenza uh, or you never see them uh, for you students you'll probably get, get questions on them on your boards but no tamiflu that's your big boy yeah flu season tamiflu is the one tamiflu is the big although boy. i will gladly dispense a flu so with a coupon oh yeah you know you get the you wave that copay you know right why not it seems to be effective i mean the reps tell me that you know it did well in cl- clinical trials so, so here's here's what i would do if i had the flu as as you know i'm totally digressing our ending here Mm-hmm. Why not take Tamiflu and Zofluza? You were telling me about a study with that. No, I wanted to find a study. Oh, okay. I thought there was something out there you were telling no, me about. The, the, I, I called the company, and they have some preclinical data, but nothing okay. concrete. Gotcha. Anyway, well, so. it'd be interesting to know something about it's. it's not, they cover the same A and B types yeah. of influenza, right? But, yep. you know, different mechanism. Yeah. Couldn't hurt, maybe. Damn, after I, after I get my flu shot, if I get the flu, I'm going to take both of them. Fuck it. Yeah, but not yeah. before consulting a real medical professional. Oh, no, no. A real medical professional will write the prescriptions, and we didn't, take it. We didn't tell you guys to do that. No, no, no. That's just theoretical personal yes. bias. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, we hope we didn't bore you, as always. Um, remember to like, subscribe, follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram iTunes, Spotify. Uh, we want questions via email at the two druggists uh, podcast at gmail.com. Yep. And, and as always, thank you very much and good night. Good night. Good night.